What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from Unsleeved Media. I'm over on the quartering set just because I'm running a little bit behind today. But it would appear the Midas touch that has been often ascribed to Richard Garfield hadn't worked with Artifact. The game itself, I think you can call now confirmed dead, confirmed flop, which opens up a bigger conversation around can anybody introduce a new trading card game? Uh, or is that space just gone? Dwindling numbers in Hearthstone and endless numbers of takers like Gwent and others trying to break into the market, none of them really achieving much success. Magic the Gathering, you could argue, has stagnated or shrunk over the past few years as well, although it seems to maintain its core audience pretty strongly. But with news now coming out that Artifact has hit rock bottom, losing 97% of their original player base, I think it's over for them. You can see here, Artifact hits rock bottom, player base drops by 97% since launch. Artifact Val's first game in over five years continues to lose players in a sharp decline since its launch in last November. Just two months after release, Steam charts show an alarming 97% drop in player count. Two weeks ago, we reported that Valve was struggling, having ended 2018 outside of Steam's top 100 plays, uh, played games. The contrast between it and its initially impressive 60,000 concurrent player count was shocking, but things have kept sliding. As we noted in our last report, news has come as a big blow to Valve. Its other most notable franchise, such as Dota, Counter-Strike Go, Team Fortress, and others are the most long-standing and popular in industry history. The publisher would surely have been hoping Artifact would rival other digital trading card games like Hearthstone and Gwent, adding a new continual stream of revenue to their lineup of games. A fate, the fate of Artifact now hangs in the balance, with gamers rejecting its premium content plus microtransaction model that is neither free to play initially nor free to keep playing beyond the first purchase. The monetization strategy has backfired in a big way, it would seem. The Steam reviews of the game highlight its poor reputation. Although Valve has a history of turning around struggling games as it did with CSGO, it's a tough uh, way to see Artifact it's tough to see a way that Artifact can recover amid an increasingly competitive genre of games. Now, this is exactly what we talked about in my first Artifact game uh, video. We looked at something like Keyforge, which to me will never really compete with Magic the Gathering. However, it is a great board game, a board game that mimics a lot of what we see in a trading card game. Keyforge, I think, will continue to be mildly successful. Artifact, bringing in the Dota franchise and breaking in a trading card game that was pretty unique. I remember in my initial review of this game that I really couldn't understand why I was paying for the game plus having to buy packs. I also talked about the questionable decision to have a secondary market where players could buy singles as I think outside of Magic the Gathering, that market is dead. I mean, when Hearthstone basically bursts onto the scene, it redefined what people's expectations were for trading card games. They expected now games to be free to play, for you to have daily rewards, for people to be able to earn in-game currency and not have to put a ton of money into the game. Artifact apparently thought, because they could slap Richard Garfield's name on it, that they would be immune to this and they could charge gamers money up front, plus sell us booster packs in the long run. And there are more articles about uh, Critical Hit. Players and fans were not impressed when Valve debuted his new trading card game, Artifact, back in November, while reactions to the overall gameplay were mixed. And by the way, I actually had fun playing the game. Uh, I thought it was interesting, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a Magic the Gathering player first and foremost, or maybe it's because it took so long even for me to warm up to Hearthstone. Everything just feels so derivative, and it's really tough to kind of stand out and be another game that people are willing to not only invest their time into, but also significant amounts of money in the case of Artifact. While reactions overall gameplay were mixed, the developer and its title received a great deal of heat for the high costs found within the game. And as it seems, a frustration is taking a toll on the active player numbers. Back in December, Gaming Life reported that Artifact had more than 60% of its players during its first week of availability. According to Steam charts, that number has spiraled even lower, totaling to a loss of 97. I'm sorry, they lost 60%. And here's the thing. 
I'm not sure you can relaunch this. Uh, Steam has the money. Obviously, I think they have no choice now but to make it free to play. Um, players, you know, complaining about the economy. I think that's a core feature of the game, uh, a core unique selling proposition. This is what makes Artifact a little bit different. But you may just have to join the rest of the free to players. The low numbers come even after Valve released a major update on December 21st, which saw the players able to level up their accounts, gain free items such as card packs. But while the update increased the player account for a while, it has dropped back down to where they initially were. And I think all digital trading card games right now are on the decline. It may appear that something like Magic Arena is growing, but that's just because it's taking players, in my opinion, out of the local game store and bringing them online. It is a much more sustainable, more profitable business model for Wizards of the Coast. Yes, they will leave behind the local game store, which in my opinion is the saddest thing. Uh, as the local game store dies, it will feel a lot like losing Blockbuster and uh, my local store, which were called Video Plus. You know, it's a sign of the times. Toys R Us closing, lost a lot of distribution for Hasbro. I think this is probably the right decision for Magic the Gathering is to continue to push people online because it's more scalable, higher profit margins. It's easier to nerf cards if you have to, but it's going to suck to be at the expense of the local game store. With Artifact coming out of the market and not offering a whole hell of a lot of difference over games like Hearthstone, uh, it's hard to see a way where this can come back around. The future does not look bright for Artifact as the card trading game continues to be dominated by other titles such as Hearthstone, Magic Duels, oh my god, get it right, it's Magic Arena, which is now free to play. While the developer may be able to reinvigorate titles such as Counter-Strike in the past, it remains doubtful that gamers will return to Artifact. That's unfortunate because I think what drives innovation is competition. And I think, you know, you might make the statement that Hearthstone itself got a little lax. That Hearthstone maybe, um, you know, they lost some of their key employees recently who went off to work on a Marvel game. You could argue that Hearthstone uh, lacked innovation over the past couple of years because it had so easily dominated the market. And now Magic Arena's out there and they're eating back a little bit of the lunch, specifically people who played Magic the Gathering and just hated the interface and the way the game played online. Now they can play Magic Arena, which is a vastly improved experience. It's still a best of one, which I think just removes all the core features of Magic the Gathering. I'm sure that wasn't an in, uh, easy decision to make. Maybe they'll take it to best of three. I mean, when you have best of one, control decks simply just dominate over and over again. So you really need to bring the sideboard back in, I think. And I think that that will uh, get more uh, entrenched Magic players like myself to give Arena a try. I'm already breaking down and considering playing a little bit of Arena because I miss playing Magic. But maybe part of what they're doing is acquiring new employee or customers with Magic Arena or getting people used to the game Magic the Gathering before introducing the sideboard which does make things a little more complex so if they're doing that i could definitely see a business decision for not having the sideboard right away and getting newbies into the game could be very smart if they did do it that way i'd have to give wizards of the coast and those running the magic arena team a lot of credit if they just want to keep the game simple and not have sideboards i don't think you're going to keep your core magic the gathering audience interested because sideboarding is a very important part of competitive play but I think at this point, it's fair to say rest in pepperonis artifact, and it's sad, disappointing to see a competitor uh, fail so quickly. Can it be restored? Maybe there's something. Maybe you have an idea. Please share it down in the comment section down below. And please don't forget to crush that thumbs up button below the video. It helps the channel grow, and it lets me know that you appreciate the work, and I appreciate you. Thanks for watching this video. We'll talk to you again real soon. Hey, if you made it to the end, I want to say thank you everyone for all the kind words and the encouragement to keep this channel going. I think I've got a good model now in my head of topics that we can cover here that are still related to gaming that maybe just don't fit on the quartering. So I think Unsleeved Media should have a bright future and I appreciate all of your support over the years and we'll see you tomorrow with a new video.